I'm Julius, I'm going to um, guide you through the <coughs> afternoon sessions and as the first talk in the afternoon we have Max Inton from CoreOS uh, and he's going to tell us about his work of making the alert manager UI better for user experience and also developer experience. Thank you very much. This is one. <laughs> okay, uh, can everybody understand me just fine? Cool, okay. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit crazy things today, maybe a little bit dangerous stuff today. I'm gonna talk about uh, the new hip JavaScript framework at an ops conference. So let's, <laughs> let's see how this turns out. Please don't kill me or anything, but uh, let's just go through it. And uh, I think a lot of stuff is quite interesting for you and in the end you got a pretty UI. Okay, all right, the more former title is Improve User and Developer Experience of uh, the Alert Manager UI. So let's look at it. Um, I'm Max, I'm a test engineer at CoreOS. Uh, I've been working a lot with the Prometheus team and that's how I got involved into the, to the project itself. Uh, feel free to ask questions during the talk or afterwards or feel free to reach out to me as well. Okay. Um, so Alert Manager, we want to talk about Alert Manager. We heard a lot about Alert Manager. I'll go over it really quickly. So what is Alert Manager? The idea is that Prometheus scrapes the targets, collects the data, uh, goes over that data, something goes wrong. Uh, it sends out alerts, but it doesn't send that out wide array, but there's Alert Manager in between right here. But we've seen this graphic, I think, four times now. It's very, very helpful. <laughs> Okay, so um, what does Alert Manager do? Well, first of all, it deduplicates alerts, uh, it groups alerts, uh, it routes your alerts in the end, and uh, the one feature is uh, you can silence alerts as well. Um, so these are the, the main functionalities of Alert Manager, but most of it uh, in the Prometheus ecosystem is configured via config files, so there's not a lot to do for the UI. So what, what do we actually want from the UI? Well, first of all, we want to display alerts. It's the alert manager, why not? Uh, we want to do CRUD operations on silences, and uh, we want to see the status of the alert manager. How is it configured, and how is it doing at the moment? Um, so these are the basic things, and that's, that's all the UI pretty much has to serve. And uh, here you see the old UI, and that's exactly what the old UI solved, um, exactly these operations. But we had a couple of problems with it. Well, first of all, we're missing some features like uh, cool filtering and searching and grouping. And uh, in addition, maybe a little bit uh, better user experience. Um, so have people find their ways faster. But the problem was really that we had little amount of contributions to this UI. So a little amount of people that wanted to contribute to it. Um, so from here on, we really had two ways to go. So either improve it, or well, we're in the open source world, why don't we rewrite it entirely? Um, so we had these two options, and we looked at both of them, of course. Um, and Stuart, one engineer formerly back then uh, working at SoundCloud, he looked at a framework called Elm. And uh, he did a little spike on it, and then sent us all an email, hey, look at this cool new feed, uh, framework uh, I used to redevelop the entire Alert Manager UI, pretty much. Uh, can you just have a look at it? And now what I want to do with you all is basically guide you to the train of thoughts that I had while I looked at this framework. So Elm, it's a functional language. It compiles down to JavaScript, and it's written by Ivan Chaplitsky. And now you might be saying, oh god, first of all, he talks about JavaScript at an ops conference, and now he talks about functional programming, really? Does this have to happen? Well, go for it. Uh, let's uh, look into it a little bit. Um, so there are plenty of JavaScript frameworks out there, right? And um, I want to look at it uh, from different dimensions, and one would be usability, and one would be maintainability. And when I'm talking about usability, I'm talking about how fast can one engineer get going with the language. And when I talk about maintainability, uh, I'm talking about um, how fast are you in, in the third year compared to the very first day. 
So let's place JavaScript on here. Um, I would place it right here. It's very usable uh, in terms of how fast can you get started. You open up your browser, you right click console, and then you're ready to go. You have the entire environment pretty much to write JavaScript. But, well, maintainability is a little bit difficult. I know who here has been on a three years old JavaScript project and feels comfortable pushing changes on Friday? I've, I've, I've seen some hands going up over there, and then when I said comfortable. <laughs> All right, so we have to change something here, but uh, let's look at the, the big brother, maybe uh, Java. Uh, Java is definitely, like in terms of getting up to speed, it's really difficult for me. I don't know, there are probably a lot of Java experts that can get fast, re uh, going really fast, but for me, setting up a Java EE project, I don't know, one day, four hours, something like that. But there's a reason for Java, right? Um, if you have a big project with a lot of uh, complicated logic in it, it is actually maintainable with Java. So these are the two things that we pretty much want to accomplish. Uh, just as a side note, where would I put Haskell? Uh, maybe up there. Um, <laughs> after four years, you're definitely very productive, and maintainable is as well very high. So anyways, so uh, let's just look at these two, Java and JavaScript, and uh, where would I place Elm, or where would I like to place Elm? And that would be right here. So I want high usability, but at the same time, have high maintainability. So let's look how uh, Elm uh, tries to implement that. But first of all, what might uh, feel strange for a JavaScript uh, engineer, it's a statically typed language. But in, uh, to not miss out on the usability, it does type interference here. The data structures underneath are fully immutable, and we're talking here about functional language, so pure functions with no side effects. Um, the, old, the dirty I.O. is taken care of by Elm itself, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, as a good JavaScript framework of 2017, of course, we have a virtual DOM, uh, or a shadow DOM, or however you want to call that. And uh, to take away the fear a little bit, there's no meta programming, uh, and in general, no magic. So you can get started really fast. What does this bring you? Well, high maintainability, high usability, exactly what we wanted. Um, no runtime exceptions. Um, in the JavaScript world, that's kind of really, really good. Uh, and enforced semantic versioning. As we're in a very static environment here, we can have a lot of code analysis, and we can enforce semantic versioning on all packages. So whenever you change something in your package, you have to bump the major version. So let's look at this um, from an easier perspective. Um, let's build a little app uh, with a counter, and you can increase and decrease it. Uh, so we have this, and when we want to build an Elm app, we need three things. We need an update, a model, and a view function. Um, let's start off with a model. At the beginning, that model is probably zero. We want to start from, from the very beginning, and we get that model on into the view function. The view function takes a model and spits out HTML. And that HTML is given to the browser, and the browser renders it as it's uh, good good to go there, and whenever the user now interacts with that page, for example, he clicks somewhere, we pass that event into the update function. The update function takes an event and the model, the old model, and then spits out a new model. That model is then directed to the view function. The view function, again, spits out new HTML, and we increase our counter. Really easy, looks here easy. Is it in code? Very small and easy as well. Let's look at that as well. So. The model, uh, we just have zero for now. You can go crazy, of course, on the model. You probably have more complicated data structures, but that's it for now. Then we have the view function, and what is really nice about functional programming, you always have type signatures on the top, so it takes a model, uh, and it spits out HTML. And in this terms, it's a button, a diff to display it, and another button. And uh, last, we have the update function. Again, let's look at the signature. We take a message, that will be just uh, an event, a browser event. Uh, we take a model, and we spit out a model in the end again. Uh, it only knows increment, decrement, but oh well. We need some glue code to glue that all together, and we're good to go, ready. Um, you can copy this from my slides, run it through the compiler, and that's it. That's the entire application. OK, we looked at a little bit more. I want to uh, highlight two more spots, and then I'll actually go into Alert Manager. 
Um, what about the tooling around it? It's compared to a very popular framework like, for example, React, React.js. Um, it has a huge ecosystem, React.js, and a huge community, and thereby a lot of packages. But React, sadly, is just a view library. So in order to achieve the same that we have with Elm, for example, we need an entire data store. That would be Redux. Then uh, we might want immutability, so we need immutable JS. Then we want flow or type system or something, so we need to integrate flow as well. Um, from here on, well, let's actually let our browsers understand all of this, so we need Babel as well. Otherwise, no browser understands ES, I don't know, 15. Um, and from here on, we need something that actually can manage all of this, so glorified make, so that would be Webpack. And to configure this, I'm back to the Java from of probably four hours. Uh, what, how does it look in Elm? Well, that's it. We just have Elm, that's all, that's all the packages. Okay, last thing um, was really great about Elm is the compiler. Uh, let's compare some compiler error messages or in JavaScript some runtime errors. Uh, first of all, in JavaScript, on card type error undefined is not a function. Who here has never seen this? <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Uh, well, first of all, which function? What undefined? What type? Uh, so this is really confusing, right? And it doesn't help you a lot. Uh, let's look at Java. Um, method X uh, is not defined for the type X. That's actually quite helpful. I can, I can use that. I can uh, debug that. And, but we can even do better, and that's where Elm comes into place. Well, it shows you where, uh, shows you where exactly in the code. And it actually gives you suggestions what to do. So uh, you might want actionable alerts, but you also want actionable error messages. OK, uh, that's all from the theoretical point. Um, I pretty much covered all Elm, so you're now all Elm experts, which is pretty cool. You're certified now. Um, we started November 3rd, or Stuart started November 3rd uh, in 2016, and we got our merge, uh, pull request merged on the 15th of May, replacing the entire old UI with the new UI. Um, and let's review this process, or to go over that, um, or let's look at actually what we did. That is the new UI. can show you around a little bit. I'll have it open here. Is that visible all right? It, of course, looks a lot better, not in such an increased way. Um, well, first of all, we brought filtering and grouping. So by default, everything is uh, grouped by the alert name. But for example, we can also now uh, group by data center, for example. And then I can look at the alerts by my data centers, and I can group by multiple stuff. Then in addition, I can, for example, filter, I don't know, I know that uh, the instance <coughs> Uh, instance 24, for example, is uh, very buggy, so I right now filter by the instance 24 and I get exactly the alerts there. Now um, I can look at additional information, maybe look at the runbook and so on. And I can silence those as well, so I can click here on silence and uh, I don't know, create max, uh, say promcon here, preview what I'm actually doing here, so I'm silencing that only one and then I can create it and here you see what exactly you silenced, and you can look at the silence, and you can look at a very, very fancy status page. Um, that's pretty much all the features. As I said, it's not very complicated, the alert measure itself. And uh, that's what we implemented. Um, and let's review this really quickly. <laughs> so far, we had zero front-end regressions. Uh, let me know if we do. Uh, give us feedback, please. Uh, we had no runtime exceptions reported so far ever to us. I've been working on quite a lot of JavaScript projects. This has never happened to me ever before. Um, we actually have active contributors. We don't have daily active contributors, but uh, maybe once a week, I think pretty much every week or more frequently, we have a new feature or we are improving this UI. And we are 90% feature parity with the old UI. We are still missing the, the routing tree, which we absolutely want to get back in. But um, in terms of what do we have more than the uh, old UI, we have a lot more that, for example, filtering, searching, and improved user, uh, usability. Okay, um, where to go from here? Well, first of all, 
it's difficult to get feedback. So um, if you're using Alert Manager right now, it uh, would be lovely if you would update to the newer version and give us some feedback. Uh, open up issues, uh, tell us about how you use Alert Manager and uh, how you think we could improve this. And last, as you're now all certified Elm experts, and as this is a very, very easy language, uh, contribute. Have a look at it. It's very interesting. It probably takes you three or four hours to get started and implement something very, very basic. Um, we're here to help. Uh, I'm here after the conference, but also very happy uh, to help in any other communication channels. In addition, I've, um, as Fabian already covered, we're hiring. We're not hiring for full-time Elm experts. I'm sorry, even you now you're all certified, can't do that. But we're hiring for Prometheus experts and automation engineers. OK, that's it. I hope you liked it. And um, sorry for all the JavaScript stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Max. Questions? I saw this hand going up very first. <laughs> I can repeat it as well as you want. Um, I think there are the long-term plans, um, but there's no like concrete plans at the moment when we want to do that. Would be nice to have like one. Oh, I'm sorry. I even suggested that. <laughs> That's horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, second quick question is how do you manage uh, style sheets uh, with Elm? Because you only talked about state and HTML. Ah, hang on. Uh, so the, the question was actually uh, if we're going to do this for Prometheus. I don't quite know yet. And about style sheets and so on. So far, we, um, we pretty much only leveraged Bootstrap. Uh, I think it looks pretty good for that. Um, what you do in terms of style sheets, there's a, like a whole war around this. Where should you put your styles? And we have done pretty much inline styles so far. I know some people might kill us for that, but uh, it works pretty well. Coming from Go, why didn't you uh, think about using Dart, for example? Feels a lot more like coming from Go feels a lot more familiar. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans or, or do you um, think about that? We, we thought about many frameworks, but uh, I think the number one most important thing for an open source project is actually finding contributors. And uh, we had three people that actually wanted to contribute to an Elm project, and that's why we, we stick with Elm in the end. Yeah. All right. More questions? Was there one over there? Or? What would you say are some of the biggest pains that you've so far like experienced with Elm? <laughs> um, actually integrating it in our current like okay that's my pain I think uh, I don't know about the other two um, integrating it in our mic file stack so uh, right now we don't want everyone to have Elm installed if he runs alert manager and wants to uh, I don't know work on alert manager so if he just wants to do backend changes we want, don't want him to have Elm installed right so we have to have some kind of binary or compiled version of that Elm front end so people can actually compile their code right and that's uh, difficult to do in a good good way that uh, both the UI uh, people are not blocked and the uh, backend people are not blocked but so far it has been a lot of fun Especially doing like one little change in your code and then your compiler tells you exactly where to go next, like where to fix from here on. That's amazing. Uh, do you plan to add the option uh, to control uh, a let manager configuration through UI? Um, I think the Prometheus uh, project is pretty uh, focused on the fact that the configs are all text files as we can thereby script everything very nicely. And I don't think uh, we, can, we can manage to have that configuration via the UI. Like that's a lot of work, and we simply don't have the uh, contributors for that. Hi. Oh, yeah. Uh, does Elm have uh, live reloading? Live and reloading, OK. Yes, and how fast it is? During development? Yes. OK, so uh, we, as I said, we invested a lot in our tooling around it. So uh, there's a dev server. And so you just start up Alert Manager and the dev server. And then whenever you save a file, it instantly reloads, pretty much. Yeah, so that's really fast. It's probably not as fancy as the React ecosystem offers you, but then again, there's it's a little bit smaller community. Yeah. Right. 
maybe slightly <laughs> off topic, and you probably haven't seen that much of it in the simple UI of Alert Manager. Mm -hmm. But how's I mean, I don't know if I can even ask, but what's the state with like UI libraries for Elm? Do you know? For UI libraries, what? Like, let's say I want to do material design or whatever. Oh, okay. I'm screwed, right? <laughs> well, first of all, it's just, in the end, HTML and CSS, right? And so material design is just a CSS library. So you just have your Elm code spitting out HTML and then adding your CSS to it. There's some behaviors which I wouldn't want to do straight away from the start, right? OK, so uh, there are a bunch of libraries, for example, for material design. There's something for Elm. Somebody okay. ported it over. But you can also interact with the, the dirty IO JavaScript world from Elm. Uh, okay. Even though people don't like that, of course, as we don't have any runtime error uh, promises yeah. anymore. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? All right. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Give him a hand. <laughs>